All right, hello wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday and our first tasting in the month of May 2014. I know a once in a lifetime event here at the Wine Watch. How many do we do a month? I think we have like three the month of May, and uh, as many as I can is my standard answer to that. And whenever one of our wine drinking people asks me, uh, hey man, I've got more of this tomorrow than I can drink. Do you think you can help? Of course we can. That's one of the most important jobs we have here at the Wine Watch, drinking the world's greatest wines. And, uh, you know, whenever you get someone like Mariano Garcia involved, uh, he's the winemaker for Vegas Sicilia for 28 years, started this project in the late 80s. I believe 1990 was the first vintage. And he makes three wines at this property, which is a 55-hectare estate just located 10 kilometers outside of the Ribera del Duero appellation. So it doesn't really have an appellation. It's Castilla y Leon, which, uh, you know, you could call wines in Rioja and Ribera del Duero and Toro, all Castillo y Leon and anything outside of those uh, DOs and DOC, of course, with Rioja. But, uh, yeah, this is a, a, a amazing wine. And like I said, it carries a low title, but you look who's involved, you know wine in a bottle is really amazing and he makes three different wines from this property he makes the uh, Bodegas Maro and then he does the VS uh, which is a selection every year usually it's two old vineyards 60 to 80 year old vines and then he does the Tereas which is an incredible wine 100 year old vineyard uh, single vineyard plot and uh, just I mean, you put these wines on the table, and I wanted to fit as many of them as we could on the table this evening, and we had 14 different wines going all the way back to 1996. Everything on the table was really good, except for one wine, which probably was off. You know, when you got a cork finished product, you're going to have 3 to 5% uh, of the wine affected by that cork in a negative way, and 7% tonight, 1 out of 14, but it's not that bad. If you count the opening wines, we had 20 wines, and then a couple of cavas to start, 22 wines in all, and you know you're getting extra here at a wine watch tasting. We don't ever just serve what is on the docket for the evening. Anyways, we started out with a 96 entry level, and this wine showed a bit of evolution on the nose there, but still some lovely red berry fruit, cherry, and strawberry. Notes of some dried meats and dried floral notes there. A lovely silky smooth texture on the tongue. The bright cherry fruit still shining through. 10% Syrah in this wine, and uh, showing some evolution on the finish, but nicely balanced. Still an excellent wine. You know, the Vendemia Seleccionada um, should have been better than this, and all the other ones were definitely a big step up from the regular bodega, especially in an off vintage, but for some reason this 96 had a really kind of earthy and kind of matterized bouquet to it, and it was still drinkable, but I don't think it was a great example of this wine. The 98 Vendemia Seleccionada, quite a strong earthy component to this wine, but after it opened up, showed some beautiful fruit, licorice spice, dried meats, and still quite big on the palate, even having some tannins here on the finish, but a nice underbelly of acidity there holding things together. Most excellent juice, the 98 selection out of 99. But I guess Marl was a bit polarizing. Some people in the group didn't like the wine at all. And then several people picked it as our top wine. So uh, you never know. That's why we taste the wines and everyone's got different tastes. But this wine did tend to have a little different flavor profile than all of the other wines and some smoky meaty notes to the nose and still had some tannins here, but a solid core of black fruit also. And just a little bit rough around the edges maybe for some, but I really like this wine. I found it quite balanced and uh, probably lasts another five to seven years. Excellent juice. The 2000 Vintage Seleccionado, one of the showiest wines on the table in terms of drinkability. Plump, ripe red cherry, wild strawberry jam fruit, notes of dried flowers, exotic spices, red licorice, really nice complexity on the nose and a very plump and juicy wine on the palate. Like I said, this wine got the vote for me for the most drinkable wine on the table. Got several votes for first place also. Most excellent juice. The 2002, definitely the weakling in the bunch and uh, this wine showing some evolution here still drinkable some nice red berry fruit a lighter wine though it's really soft tannins and in 2002 you really saw the difference between the selection out of wine because this wine was definitely a few steps up because of the difficult vintage and uh, they probably made a lot less of it and uh, still some nice fruit in this wine red cherry and wild strawberry exotic spices meaty notes richer and thicker on the tongue and um, still a good hand of spice and zest on the finish really nice balance this wine's drinking at its peak but it'll definitely last another three to five years lovely balance there excellent juice and then the big boy the Tereus 2003 which was a hot year we'll make that the hottest year I think ever uh, so far I mean obviously there's next year but uh, this is uh 
incredible the concentration and richness in this wine and it's stunning and just uh you know like i said a couple of steps up so all three of these wines really showing different levels of richness and complexity and uh just darker in color really rich and thick on the palate and a long layered finish with a lot of exotic spice and uh, just rich succulent fruit almost liqueur like in concentration most excellent juice this wine got a few votes for wine of the night and as did the 2004 vintage wines, uh, the 2004 uh, uh, entry-level wine, or I say there's anything entry-level about any of these wines. And then the Torres were up next, and the 2004 Torres wine of the night on most people's scorecard. Just incredible richness and decadence, and you know the the, the, the Boro Moro wasn't that far off to me when I first opened it up. But the next day, you really noticed a difference in these wines. The 2004 still being somewhat tightly wound, and uh, the Torres, uh, you know, still being pretty big and uh, unapproachable. This wine needs another 10 years in your cellar. If you got either one of these, don't open them up yet. That's why we do these tastings, scientific research. So you don't have to open up your 2004 Torres. Trust me, it's not ready. 2005 Moro up next. This wine was very ready. 2005 showing some lovely rich decadent black and red fruit and uh, lovely spice, black licorice, tobacco, um, almost as much complexity as the Vendimio selection here. These wines not showing that much of a difference to me in 05. Chunky cherry, prune fruit, and a uh, silky smooth tannins. Really some nice spice, black licorice, and a nice balance to this 2005s. Probably another five to seven years at least on this wine. The Vendimia selection, uh, you know, definitely you notice a step up, but in very good vintages like 2005, not as apparent like in the 2002. Very similar flavor profile, just richer and a longer finish in this wine. Excellence. But like I said, not as much of a difference in a vintage like 05. 2006, uh, the Tereus. Wow, this is... Uh, Several picks for wine of the night, and uh, this was definitely showing better than the 04. You know, you noticed the 04 had a little more to it, and you could just tell it was dying to get out. And uh, let me tell you, this wine, really good, and uh, plum, fig, prune, exotic array of spice, lavender, espresso, just kept evolving as the wine opens up even better on the second day. Big and chewy on the tongue with a really lovely, uh, uh, forward and seductive nature to this 2006, but still... I mean, really well built. This wine needs uh, some time. The finish just goes on and on in this wine. Most excellent juice. Hey, we had the 2007 Vendemia selection, which a little bit young. I mean, this wine, um, 33 months in American and French oak. The other difference between that and the Tereus is the Tereus is 100% French. And uh, showing some nice prune and fig in this wine. Some game and wild strawberry notes. This 2007 uh, showing some nice uh, signs, you know, that, this wine is also very well balanced, but still very, very young. These wines, to me, need time. You know, we had the 2010 uh, entry level, which uh, this wine still very tightly wound, and a great vintage 2010. And the Syrah helps to make this wine a little bit more drinkable, but uh, a lot of nice dark spice, espresso, wild flowers, almost like an iron quality to the 2010. The 2008 Vendemia selection was uh, another wine we had at the pre-tasting. We showcased the other two wineries at this uh uh, these two, Eduardo and his father, uh, own together the Bodegas Vino Moro Dos, which has the Prima wine, which we sell a ton of Prima from Toro, and uh, the San Roman, the top wine from that winery. We showed the 2010 vintage of that and the 2011 Prima, which is a great little value. That's a little monster, the wines of Toro. Uh, big tannins in those wines, the 11 uh, showing a little bit more the forward nature of that vintage. And 10, San Roman needs to be decanter for several hours. Uh, the 2011 Astralis and the 2009 Astralis also on the table back there. And let me tell you, this is the first time I've had the 11 Astralis. This one, a little monster, most excellent juice, very big. Uh, this is their Ribera del Duero property, Astralis. And then the 2009, showing the nature of this vintage, which is, uh, you know, very forward, very rich. It was a warm year. And uh, it's a blend of seven different vineyard sites and uh, a really big wine, but pretty drinkable this 2009. Both of these wines, excellent juice. The uh, Tristina, definitely a step up there also. And that's what we had to drink with our friend Matthew Roberts from Bodegas Morrow. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying, remember... Always drink the good stuff first.